Hello, this is Narain water level controller model WLC MD21. This is basically used uh, to lift water from the sump or underground tank to the tank overhead tank. So mainly designed for domestic applications. So as you all know, water level controllers are uh, used to uh, automatically switch on the motor when, when the water level in the overhead tank dips to certain level and again uh, shut off the motor when the overhead tank fills up. So this product as you can all see has uh, the different level indicators. On the overhead tank it has uh, four level indicators that is 25%, 50%, 75% and 100%. So it is demarc uh, uh, there is four uh, markings here. Similarly when you uh, have a look at the sum uh, levels there are three levels minimum, medium and maximum. So these are all the level indicators. So whenever water is present in that particular sensor level the particular LED lights up. So this particular model can be used for uh, monoblock as well as open well submersible pumps. So uh, the rating would be from 0.5 HP to 2 HP. So you can use it from 0.5 HP, 1, 1 HP, 1.5 as well as 2 HP. Any of these HP ratings you can use this product. So uh, to quickly have a look at uh, how the product looks, uh, you will have uh, the power on and off switch here on the left hand side. Switching it off will shut off all the uh, supply. And you can also see manual and auto switch. So this, this switch when kept in auto mode will allow the water level controller to automatically function. When in manual mode it will bypass the water level controller functionality and which will manually switch on the motor. Just like turning on the motor manually. Okay, I will just leave it in the auto start mode so or auto mode and we will power on the system. So before that we will quickly have a look at the connections. So connections as you can all see just turn off the power supply okay so uh, for connections we are making use of narain uh, open well submersible starter model neo of rating 1 hp so uh, if you have an open well submersible pump this is the way you will have to make connections so you can see the power connectors on the uh, left hand side it's a four-way connector the first two are incoming phase and neutral the last two connectors connectors number three and four are outgoing connectors this can be connected to the incoming of the starter so the, the load carrying phase wires, the thicker wires are first given into uh, the water level controller as input. The output of water level controller should be uh, the wires of the same size. So the output of water level controller will be given as an input to the open well submersible starter. Okay. The motor cables as usual are connected to the output of the open well submersible starter. I hope I am clear with the uh, power connections. So once that is done, we are all left with the sensor part. Uh, you you can just have a look at the different sensors here. So on the sum you will have you will need four sensors common Minimum medium and maximum similarly for the overhead tank also you will need four sensors common uh, 50 75 and 100 okay. So this 25% is the tank empty indication hence the color would be of uh, red in color So whenever the tank is empty this particular LED lights up. And also on the device you can see these three power LEDs so the first one is the power LED whenever there is power supply this LED will light up then this is the dry pump whenever the motor runs dry and the controller shuts off the motor due to dry run this LED will glow up and whenever there is high and low voltage conditions this particular the third LED will glow so second and third LED basically are the error LEDs and while the motor is running you can see this motor on LED glowing when the motor is off due to dry run you can see uh, this LED glowing and these are all respective uh, tank level indicators and you can see the LEDs alongside the pipe marking here. So these are the flow LED indicators. So while the motor is running, when the water is falling in the overhead tank, this LEDs will mimic the water flow and they will uh, according the pa there, there will be the water flow pattern which is coming in. We will quickly have a look when we uh, have a look at the demo. So uh, quickly moving on to the sensor connections. So the package comes like this this particular sensor packet will come along with the uh, controller so you will have the markings for the sump and overhead tank so we will also mention which colored wire should be used where the common wire usually is longer in length and uh, sump flow is uh, lesser in length so this decreases the length decreases uh, when when coming from common to sump high so sump high is the least uh, length wire here okay similarly the overhead tank also has four uh, wires of, of the same marking so you will just have to follow the color codes and uh, do the uh, sensor placement. So quickly moving on to uh, how sensor looks. This is how the bullet sensor looks. 
So bullet sensor has to be placed in the inside the water. Every bullet sensor will have one single wire coming out of it. So the very first sensor is the common sensor. So first we'll start with the sump connections. So the common sensor should be placed at the bottommost point. The common sensor will should always be inside the water in the sump, and the wire which is coming out of it, the wire which is coming out of it should be connected to common. Okay, the sensor which is placed at the bottommost point, the wire coming out of it should be connected to common. Then we have sump low. Sump low should be placed on top of the motor. The idea is whenever the water level drops below the uh, you know the sump low sensor, the motor will be shut off. So this is the sump low indication. So the wire coming out is out of sump low sensor should be given to sump low. Then we have sump medium. The sump medium is the next sensor which is placed at around uh, maybe 40 percent mark in the sump. So this is sump low, and then the top level will be sump high. Sump high is the next uh, connector here. So sump high. So sump high is common, low, medium, high is the fourth connector from the left hand side. The sump high should be placed at around 50 percent mark. Or maybe 60% mark in the sump. So uh, the, for the motor to switch on, the sump, the water level in the sump should at least be till medium, and for the motor to switch off, the water level should drop below sump low. So similar, likewise, it is like four sensors in the sump. The first one is common, sump low, sump medium, and sump high. There will be four sensors at different levels placed in the sump. Similarly, the same pattern has to be followed for the overhead tank as well. The first sensor will be common. That will be the next. You can see common here. Common is the next connector after some uh, some high. Yeah. Common connector which is placed at the bottommost point in the overhead tank. Then you have uh, tank low on top. Tank low is the level at which uh, when the, whenever the water level falls below tank low, the motor switches on. Then we have tank medium. Tank medium is usually an intermediate level which is placed at around you now 60 to 70 percent mark, just for the indication. So then the last sensor will be tank high. Tank high is the level at which the water or the motor switches off. So whenever the water hits the a tank high mark, the motor automatically switches off. So again, four sensors in the overhead tank, common at the bottommost point, tank low, tank medium and tank high. Okay, tank low is the uh, main, so main sensor wherein you know the motor switches on and tank high is the sensor where the motor switches off. So likewise, you have uh, common, tank low, tank medium, tank high. Okay, coming from left hand side, it is common, sump low, sump medium, sump high. Again, common, tank low, tank medium, tank high. And the last one is dry run sensor. So dry run sensor is a different type of sensor which is provided in the package alongside. So uh, dry run sensor usually is not used when the sensors are placed in the sump. However, in some of the cases, uh, due to some uh, practical problems, it, it might, might not be possible to put in sensors in the uh, sump or underground tank. So in that scenario, we will recommend using this dry run sensor. Dry run sensor is supposed to be placed at the, uh, you know, uh, at the inlet. Whenever the water falls in the overhead tank, uh, there is this pipe coming in. So let us assume my, my finger is the pipe. So on top of the incoming pipe, the dry run sensor should be placed. So this is a flexible material. It can be bent. So it should be placed on the pipe, bent accordingly and tagged alongside the pipe. So there will be two screws uh, in the dry run sensor, you can see. The water coming out of the pipe should fall on these two screws and then fall inside the tank. So since it is placed like this, the water coming in should fall on this and then enter the tank. So the wires coming out of the dry run sensor, there, is, there are two wires. One should be connected to common, any one wire should be connected to common. The other wire should be connected to the dry run, that is the last point. So if you are not using the dry run sensor, that is if the sensors are already placed in the sum, you will have to short common to dry run, you will have to interconnect these two. This is when the sensors, dry run sensor is not placed. Likewise, when the dry run sensor is placed and when the, uh, the sum sensors are not placed, you need to short common to sum low, sum medium and sum high. So this is just to indicate the water level controller that you are not placing the sum sensors. Okay, I hope I am clear with this. We will quickly move on to the operations now. So we will turn on the power supply. You can see as soon as the power supply is on, you can see all the LEDs blinking for a while. So right now, this indication suggests that we have full water in the sump and full water in the overhead tank. We will first mimic the first condition wherein the 
uh, the water level con water level in the overhead tank drops down you can see uh, like the water level is dropping down in the overhead tank whenever water level drops below 50 percent you can see the motor switching on so whenever water level falls below this level uh, you can uh, the controller will first check for the availability of water in the sump since the water is always there so, sorry since the water is there now the motor switches on you can just see that the tank got empty and the motor switched on because the water is there in the sump so as soon as the uh, motor switches on and water hits on the dry run sensor you can see this flow indicator is glowing okay so likewise the tank fills up eventually so when the tank fills up you can see these leds glowing and when the tank completely fills up the motor shuts off this is case number one then the second case would be while the motor is running let us say uh, let us empty the tank now the tank is getting empty and what the motor is switched on so the motor switched on because the water was available in the sump. Let us say the sump water drains out now before the tank fills up. So while the motor is running, if the sump water you know gets empty, the motor will be shut off whenever the water level drops below the sump low mark. Okay, we can see the water in the sump depleting. Whenever water level drops down, you can see motor sh shutting off. See the motor shut off because the water was not available in the sump. So whenever the water comes and fills inside the sump, the motor automatically switches on. So for the motor to automatically switch on, the water level should reach at least the medium position. So whenever water level fills up to medium and the tank is empty, the motor automatically switches on. Okay. This is the next condition here. So likewise, when the overhead tank fills up, the motor turns off. Yeah, this is case number two. And then we will quickly have a look at the importance of need button. So let us say the overhead tank is uh, half full. So if you want to you know, fill up the overhead tank, so for the water level controller to automatically switch on, the water level should drop below 50%. So for example, a scenario wherein you got to know that there won't be power for the next couple of hours or there are guests coming in and you decide to fill up the overhead tank. So in that case, you can always press this need button. Pressing this need button will manually switch on the motor provided the water is there in the sump. The motor switches on and whenever the tank fills up the motor automatically switches off so this is more like a semi-automatic operation so pressing this will manually switch on the motor and whenever the tank fills up it's automatically switching off the motor so this is pretty much about the functionality of this particular water level controller model wlc md21 so if you have any queries with this product uh, please do contact us our contact number is double nine seven double two four three double seven four you can also call us uh, to uh, you know get this product we, we are shipping throughout the country and we can also assist you over phone with the installation suppose you have any issues and uh, yeah you can also browse our website for more more products of us our website address is www.narainelectrics.in it's www.narainelectrics.in thank you for watching this video